All right, to start out, I decided I'd compose a little list of um, what I think the essentials, the basics are to just getting into flatbedding. Um, we're gonna go over a couple tools uh, for flatbedding trade itself, and then also a few tools that you just need to have regardless of what division of trucking you're going to be in. So let's get started, let's get into it. All right, another very important thing you're gonna have to have with you at all times if you're getting into flatbed, it's gonna obviously be the safety equipment. Hard hat, glasses, safety vest. The three basics that you're gonna need. Um, another good thing to have that a lot of places will ask for, but I don't think it's recommended, is safety toe shoes or boots. Personal opinion, you should wear boots if you're in flatbedding, period. I don't carry safety toe boots, steel toe, whatever you, might want to consider it. I just wear my everyday boots all day long. No one ever says nothing. I've never been checked for that, regardless whether I'm picking up steel or picking up lumber. But pet peeve, if you're going to be in flat bedding, you should wear jeans and boots while you're working. It's just me. But um, as far as safety equipment goes, you know, those are your general basics that you should have in the truck with you at all times. Regardless of the commodity it is that you're going to be picking up, sometimes you need all of it, sometimes you need none of it. Have it with you and have backups of everything. Next on the list, these. Get yourself multiple and good bright flashlights. Regardless of what you're doing, most trucks, or maybe not most, some, you know, owner off, I suggest you put them on, but you know, you have work lights out the back of your truck. That's fine and dandy, that'll help couple and uncouple the trailers, tarp load, strap load, whatever you might need. Those mornings or middle of the night when you gotta, you know, inspect a flat tire, do a pre-trip, try to find an oil leak. Middle of the day, look around engine bays. Get you good flashlights. And have multiple. Have backup batteries, get rechargeable ones, have the chargers for them. These are key. Flashlight, as simple as it is, I have more than I can count. I have one on my keychain. I keep these next to me in the truck. One on the door, one up in the cubby hole up there. I got one in my toolbox. I have them everywhere. I will never not have light. So, super important essential, flashlights. List, one of these. If you don't know what it is, probably shouldn't sit in the seat here behind me. Uh, I am very pro Atlas. I think if you want to be a truck driver, you should bare minimum know how to read one of these. And bare minimum, you should actually follow at least somewhat of the Atlas other than just your phone or GPS. Um, I'm not against GPS. I've ran one before for about a year. It's a good tool and resource to have. I don't feel that you should follow it to a T. If you do, you probably will end up on Twisted Trucker or next to a junker with Swift or something along those lines. But, get you a good one. Get a laminated one such as this. Large print. It will break down all your major cities. If you want to run around traffic, an accident, something like that, a road you're not sure if you're allowed down, that's what this is for. This will tell you if you're allowed down that road or not. Um, I use this on a weekly basis for sure. A lot of routes I just run because I know them now, but there still is the occasional time you get up in the middle of nowhere. You might be delivering in the middle of nowhere. You might be delivering in downtown of a city. These are where they come in handy to let you know what roads you're allowed down and where bridges are, where, you know, scale houses are. That's all told in here, along I know with your GPS. Um, to me, it's a necessity. You have to know how to read one. You should have it in the truck and it's gonna get you out of a lot of jams regardless of what they may be. So, Atlas, go buy one. It's worth it. It's a tax write-off. It is a business tool. It is an essential. Another thing I wanted to talk about was load bars. Whether you're a company, usually if you're a company driver, you'll be given a load bar basically after orientation or ready to be in your truck. If you're under up, go buy one, not a big deal. It's a necessity. You cannot do your job without a load bar. My recommendation though for that is get yourself 
two lug bars. Always have two in the truck at all times. The reason for that is, you know, if you're using the combination side like I do, you know, they're cheaply made, they're welded, the welds crack, the welds break, they get used a lot, they get beat around. So, have two lug bars for the reason if it breaks, and also there are those times you might rush, you might forget, especially if you're new, you're not, you don't have a routine set up to where, you know, I take my gloves off, I put my lug bar in the side box, I know it's there every time. You might forget it on a trailer. Hopefully you don't. That could end badly for the guy behind you, beside you. You get the idea how that can go. But you have the idea, you know, there is the chance that you could lose one of your load bars. One way or the other. Have that backup. Because if you don't realize it and you get to the customer, whether it's securing or unsecuring, you can't do that job without that load bar. So... You know, piece of advice I was told a long time ago and I always have never had to use the backup load bar, but it's always in here. So have yourself two load bars. Alright, another thing that's not as much common, but I've just learned throughout the years it's a very, very good thing to have. Have a way to patch your tarps. The last thing you want is a cargo clamp. You know, I have, which I will show here in a minute, I have an actual tarp repair kit. I also have black extra strength Gorilla Tape. Whatever you have to do for the short term to get that load patched so that it does not get damaged is the ideal goal. I'll usually use the tape to get me a hole on, you know, if it's already on the load to get me to where I need to be. After I take it off, I instantly... This is a tarp repair kit. It's very simple. You could probably get them at better prices. I needed one at the time. I went to Kenley Truck Stop and bought their $60 patch kit. All it is is extra vinyl, acetone cleaner. Make sure you clean off the spot you're going to be applying the vinyl cement. Then it has a couple rags in there which are junk. I just leave them in there. I don't use those. I use microfiber. But regardless, this will be your best friend. You get that little hole in your tarp, you prevent it from getting any larger, preventing your loads from getting damaged, having cargo claims. This is what you need. It may have been $60, it's worth it in the long run because you do not want to pay for damaged goods, return that load back to where you got it. it the 60 is just, it's irrelevant. Buy one, have it, use it. It'll keep your tarps long term. And it will prevent the cargo claim, which are, you know, your two most important because both are very costly. Being a flatbedder, straps. Straps are key. I am a firm believer of having way too many damn straps that you'll never need them all. But in the instance that you would need them all, you're covered. So, four inch wise, now with my own trailer, uh, I don't like leaving them on the winches, so I take them off and roll them up and then store them in my side box. When I was dragging around company trailers doing drops and swaps, they preferred them spooled on the trailer. I left them on there. So there's a couple tools I'm going to talk about when it comes to straps and straps themselves that I feel you should have in your truck or with you at all times. Um, <clears throat> most trailers you're probably going to have like 12 to 14 straps, especially company drivers. If they stay spooled on there, if they're given to you, you're probably going to have about 14 straps. Normally, that's more than enough to accomplish any type of load you're going to haul. There are the you know times where you get random, weird assortment of stuff where you might not need it for weight securement, but to have a piece on, but to have a strap on every piece on your trailer, you're going to need a lot of straps. Rather than throwing four inch for all of that, you can throw a two inch. Me personally, over the years, I've just accumulated this many, but I probably have probably about 14 two inch straps and ratchets. Way more than I need, I've never gone through. I could secure an entire trailer load worth of product with just two inch straps. Don't do that, I don't recommend it, that's a lot of extra work. But I have that many for whatever the situation may be. You know, something happens, you run across an idiot in the truck stop, he cuts all your straps. You're screwed. It's unlikely to happen, but it can happen. Um, 
you know, puncture holes and straps, you know, any type of hole. I forget the actual DOT size of it. Basically, you see a hole in the middle of your strap, get rid of it, it's junk. Not much you can do with it, it's just going to get worse. Toss it out. I usually keep about, I think I have about 20 four inch straps in my truck for loads, whatever they might be. You know, I use a two inch strap for securing my dunnage there in the landing gear. Um, strapping up tarps to the back of the headache rack, strapping them on the trailer. A lot of use for two inch straps, a lot of use for having extra four inch straps. Um, there's a couple other things you could have that aren't like a necessity, it is a convenience to have. Um, I have a couple portal winches that go in the stick pockets. Um, I have a couple four inch ratchets um, for the times. I usually use the four inch ratchets over the pocket winches. Like if I end up having a spool that might be over top of the tire, I'll just bust out the four inch actual ratchet. That way I don't have to worry about the spool being in the way, rubbing against the tire and me having to get a tire. You get the idea. Um, now, as far as the other thing that goes along with straps is how you wind them up. Get yourself a strap winder. It's going to save you so much time and your forearms, wrists, and fingers by getting one. They make two different kinds. And two, they generally, there's two general kinds. There we go. Can't talk. They have one that's just a bar that basically has a couple bends in it, and it's like an old school hand drill. Um, put the one hook into the spool and you can spool them up. Have one of those. Then they also have ones which they have different varieties of them, but I have one that just hangs on the rub rail. It has a fork on it with a handle. I slide my strap through and I wind them up that way. However your company or yourself like to store your straps, get the strap winder that fits your needs. Most of the time they're around 20 bucks on a truck stop, well worth it. Rather than going up and down each side and try to hand spool or, you know, sit there with your fingers and wind up straps on your winches, get a strap winder. The $20 is worth it. Um, have extra straps. Secure your straps, whether they're on the winches, you know, spool. I used to spool them up, bunch them all together and take bungees and X across them. They never unspooled on me. You wind them up get little bungees to go around them or tight it or tuck them away nice and tight so they don't unspool just keep your truck and your equipment organized it'll last you longer it'll work better um, as far as straps go that's pretty much it as far as for what I use and what I think your necessity should be if you're just starting out have two inch straps have extra four inch straps get yourself a strap winder that's pretty much the basics To sum it up, basically, the essentials you need for just getting into flatbed trucking is going to be a mix between the things you need for trucking itself and then the tools you're going to need for flatbedding. So, atlas, straps, strap winders, organization of your straps, flashlights, safety gear, um, load bars. These are just a few I think of the real nitty-gritty essentials that you're going to need to complete your job. There are numerous things I can go on and discuss and things I've tried that I don't like or don't work well and then other things that once I tried them I had to have them. It's going to vary on the person, it's going to vary on your experience, it's going to vary on the type of work you do. You know, If, if you're doing preload drops and swaps all the time, you're not going to need half the stuff that I have. Um, depending on the company you go to, if you're a company driver, you know, they're going to provide all the things they know you're going to need. There's other things you could buy to help yourself, but I just kind of wanted to make a video of what I thought over the years where these are like the basis to everything else I grew on. This is the minimum stuff that I have kept with me to this day that I started out with that has never let me down. Um, I hope this helps, you know, maybe give a few people who are borderline going into flatbed, don't know what they want to do, or in flatbed, not sure some of the things that, you know, others have or what they're called. These are just, you know, a few little essentials I feel you need for first getting out here and dragging a skateboard. Uh, either way, you know, I hope this helps someone if, you know, 
there's something you want me to add, something you want me to talk about or touch on, I mean, as this little video adventure of mine goes on, I'm going to start breaking down more and more of the things I use. I'll probably do like a truck tour and equipment tour and then securement and tarping videos, but I figured to start out for the how-to style of a video. These are the essentials I think you need to start out in flatbedding. But, um, yeah, that's it. So until next time, talk to you guys later.